Hey, good morning, YouTubers. Hey, this is my 2013 update on my wood boiler system, and uh, I promised one a long time ago. But she's really up to snuff now, so I want to show it to you. And, uh, you know, for a little thing that's rated 100,000 BTU, it's uh, driving, see, five radiators and a domestic hot water tank. And it's done really well. Uh, when it got really cold, around zero at night for a long time, uh, it was it was uh, wheezing a little bit, but now that the weather's uh, in the 20s, man, it's perfect. Works great. So I'm going to take you on a little tour of it, and if you got any questions, shoot me a line. Thanks a lot. So here it is. the The biggest improvement is insulating the uh, boiler itself. It was originally an indoor type boiler, and I can't believe it never occurred to me to insulate it, but I didn't until. Uh, this year. Uh, it's kind of a temporary, but it's two layers of fiberglass batting and uh, some tin foil. And what a radical difference it made. I uh, insulated the pipes leading into the house with some insulation and I just uh, sleeved them with some stove pipe I had laying around. What a huge difference. Comes up to temperature faster and uh, doesn't freeze overnight if the fire goes out. So uh, really excellent. I replaced the chimney with just another thing of stove pipe. Nothing special about that, just blue stove pipe. It uh, survived Hurricane Sandy, so I guess uh, did the job. So, uh, we're in my preferred fuel source, which is cut up pallets. Uh, companies around here seem to be doing more work, so there's more pallets around, so uh, I grab them kind of out of firewood. It is getting towards spring and I got some some logs back there but who's got time for that? I tell you once you burn dry pallets you're spoiled. Nothing burns hotter and uh, of course they burn quick but it's free sorta. Of. So there you go. So I'm going to take you inside and show you what goes on inside to uh, to get the heat into the house. This is Harold. He enjoys the heat the most. So the first stop along the way is this giant radiator. Uh, this house is kind of uh, this uh, room is kind of cold. It's got two sliders and backs up to the garage, so uh, requires a lot of heat to overcome that. So uh, old radiator, I just spray painted it, put on a new valve, and uh, really cranks. Next stop along the way is this cute little radiator for the bathroom. It's just. Uh, hooked in parallel with that silver one. Same idea, old radiator, spray painted with new new stuff on it. New bleeder, new valve. So this is where it all started. This is the radiator I had last year. It's in the stairway. Most of the heat from this goes upstairs, which is good. Next one was my wife's idea, this little radiator to heat the coats. It's in one of the front rooms. Works excellent. Last one in the line is way at the other end of the house. Uh, it's about uh, four feet long. But this gets good heat and it really helps to even out the uh, comfort of the house. Same idea, it's an old radiator, spray painted, new valve, and new bleeder. And it had a, a nail driven in it to plug a hole. I just left it in there and went over it with JB Weld and no problems. It, it sealed perfect. So next we'll go down in the cellar and I'll show you what's down there. Alright, so now we're down in the basement. And this is the other side of the sill where the insulated pipes come into the house. Okay, so if you get, can picture that. And that's uh, the length of the house down that way. Pardon the mess. It is a mess, but... Anyway, so here's your one inch PEX. One of the improvements I made was to uh, put a T into it and feed this uh, domestic hot water heater. It's a Superstore. I got it on Craigslist for about 275 bucks. I had to buy a control for it, but it had some of the piping and stuff and a mixer valve, so it's a great deal. It's clean as a whistle. And man, oh man, it's 40 gallons. So this sees the first hot water out of the boiler, and it satisfies at 140, which is perfect for me. Okay, so then uh, we go out of that tea 
and we come down and this branch here is uh, feeding that silver radiator that's in that first room with the sliding doors okay so I recently added a little radiator in the bathroom and uh, uh, that's where that hooks up just stub down through the floor and uh, feeds that okay so have a look <clears throat> so the whole story here is you know we have this extra old tank got a back feed preventer and a cold water feed to fill the system up I put a switch on the uh, circulator for the hot water tank because there's sometimes when we're only here for three or four days and I don't want to mess with it I don't want to switch it over to this from the electric tank but I will tell you this this makes the whole system worthwhile uh, by shutting off my electric tank and using this it drops my my electric bill 75 bucks a month so that's just for two showers and some laundry a, you know a day laundry not every day but for two people 75 bucks so uh, if you're wondering about if these things really work they're awesome man all right, so you can just imagine the rest. Uh, I just tee off. Uh, that that goes down to the last radiator, and thus and so. So that's really it. Got any questions? Shoot me a line. But uh, on the hot water tank here, I got a circulator with a check valve. So when this shuts off, it won't siphon. The water won't keep getting hotter and hotter. The uh, has a flapper valve in it. So uh, when that shuts off, that's it. And you can really tell when this is satisfied because the radiators and the rest of the house start putting out more heat. And the temperature goes up as long as you're still burning the fire. So I don't know. The radiators all cost between fifty and a hundred bucks a piece. A couple of them were a little cheaper. And this tank and the boiler. I don't know. I've of course got some labor in it. But the parts, probably a thousand bucks total over a two, three year period of collecting. Uh, so, anyway, I know nobody really likes these shark bite connectors I get at Lowe's, but uh, I've never had any trouble with them except for when the boiler got too hot and it boiled and they, they melted. They won't take boiling water or steam, but you know, they don't leak and you can take them apart. And if you screw them up, just save the packages and Lowe's will take them back. Just cry the blues and they'll swap them out. So, uh, just a trick of the trade, I guess. I, I save all my packages for my shark bites just in case I have a, an issue. All right. Well, thanks a lot. Stay warm and uh, think spring. Bye.